In this video, I'll be breaking down every single step that allowed me to create this final animation. Visually, I'd say this is a pretty basic Spider-Man scene, but it actually gets technical fast, so I'd recommend you have at least some experience with Blender. Specifically, we'll be looking at how to set up Spider-Man, animate him running off a rooftop, and then performing this cool one-arm swing. And before we get right into it, I just want to say that the best way to support me and keep this channel running is to check out my Patreon. That's where you'll find 3D assets like the building model I used in my final animation, cool tutorials, and all these tricks that I've gathered on my 3D journey. I love creating and sharing 3D art, and it would mean the world to me to have your support. Before we get started, I just want to touch on an important subject and that is reference. The key to exciting and realistic Spider-Man animations is to take inspiration from official Spider-Man content. My animation is obviously based on The Amazing Spider-Man 2, but I also get ideas from Into the Spider-Verse for the jump off. And arguably, I think the PS5 Spider-Man game is the best reference out of all. Even just watching YouTube videos of Spider-Man free roaming in your favorite suit can already give you crazy ideas. And with that being said, let's get into it. Alright, for this tutorial, I'm using a bunch of free third-party models, online tools, and add-ons. All of these resources are linked in the description for you to check out, but I'll quickly mention them to get you familiar. I'll be using this Spider-Man model found on Sketchfab, this Mixmo add-on by Adobe, this AI character movement generator called Mojen, this animation retargeting add-on found on GitHub, the Blossom add-on also found on GitHub, and Midjourney for generating custom high-quality textures. So you should have this Spider-Man FBX file downloaded and you want to make sure that the FBX and the textures that come with it are all in the same folder so it will import the textures properly. I'm going to head to file, import FBX and before we import, we're going to change the scale to 0 0.00725 for this specific model. All right, now you can see Spider-Man is lying down. I have no idea why the author set him up this way, but I'm just going to go to pose mode, pose, clear, transform, all, go to object, rotate by 90 degrees all transforms and we also want to make sure we delete the keyframes that's important and now if i click on spidey you can see that the height dimensions is realistic 1.81 meters that's like perfect now i'm going to go straight into cycles and i'm going to add in a sunlight the sunlight is a bit weak so i'm going to change this to eight and i'm just going to angle it a little bit more of where i want and we're also going to start bringing the shader editor so with the sun selected we want to click use nodes and we're going to bring a black body node and this is because we want to control the color temperature of the sun. And it actually has a specific value. It's not just white. That's not realistic. So the sun's color temperature is actually 5,800. All right, cool. Now that we have a sun, we want to find ourselves a sky HDRI just so that we can light our scene a bit. Cool. So now that we have some lighting, we can finally start adjusting some of Spider-Man's textures to make it look way cooler. So we're going to select the mesh. And if we go down to the materials, you can see we have this giant mess of like unnamed stuff. If you go to edit mode, you'll be able to select each one of them to see what they do. This one selects the soles. This one selects like half of a hand or something. So what we're going to do is we're just going to combine all the body stuff into one body file, which is like this third one. You can see this third one has everything but those two. So what I'm going to do is select those two, um, select the third one and then assign, right? And then I'm just going to call the third one body. If you select this one, it's the eyelids. So we're just going to call this eyelid. If you select this one, it's the lens. So we're just going to call this lens. Um, and I'm pretty sure these are the web shooters. Well, cool. and then we can tab out and then these Two, we don't need all right now that we've organized the materials uh, let's start with the eye right so go to lens we can uh just immediately just increase the metallicness and roughness you know that's going to make it shinier i'm also going to add in an rgb curves and i'm just going to bump this a little bit up all right now for the main body this is what's going to really sell it first i'm going to select the normal setup that comes with it and i'll copy it once next with your new copy we are going to add in a mix shader and mix these two together and the idea is we want to be able to separate the colors and control each aspect so i want to be able to control the blue part and the red part separately um we are just going to copy this base color texture you see if i if i preview this this is the base color texture this is what it looks like and i am going to run that through a separate color as you can see it's uh separating the red channel right now so it's selecting everything that's red we want to make this a bit more obvious because we're going to use this as a mask so we're going to add a color ramp bump that black crank this white all the way up so now that we have this um black and white information we'll just lead that to the mix shader now we're finally able to adjust um, spider-man's colors separately so let's start with the blues um the blues i believe is down here immediately if i just change the metallicness up and decrease the roughness 
that already makes a really big difference. And now for the red, and this is really what's going to sell it. We can always increase the metallicness and the roughness. I'm going to decrease it a little bit. This is down to preference as well. And finally, this is like the one secret trick to make making this suit look so much cooler. What we want to do is to just crank up this anisotropic value. And it just gives this really interesting shine. All right, so now that the Spider-Man is all set up, we're going to start animating our walk-run cycle. To animate a walk-run cycle, we're going to be using this online tool that's capable of AI-generated character animations. If you head to MoGen, you'll be able to see that this is the standard generated animation it comes up with. And they have a document about this. If you go to Blender Quick Start Guide, they have an entire slide on how to import custom paths. So to have the custom path, we need to go to the slide and we need to download the Motorica blend file. So I'm just going to go into my current file and I'm just going to append um, the Motorica file. Go to collections. I'm just going to append the collection. Well, so now that we have the Motorica stuff, we're just going to move the armature to the side. Make sure you've established your FPS before we start um, customizing a path because that's going to affect the oncoming layers of animation. I'm going to enable auto keyframing and I am going to start animating this thing. So I will set a keyframe right here. One second in, I want him to step back a little bit. So I'll do that. Cool. And then I want him to kind of walk back a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. And then let's have Spider-Man sprint, right? We want him to sprint on the rooftop. So I'm just going to drag this all the way here. We're going to select this final keyframe, press B and hit vector. This way speed is consistent and he doesn't slow down. All right, that looks good. In order to export this, we need to select the actual armature of this and then go to file, export FBX. Now this is important. In the export settings, we want to limit it to the selected objects, which should be the armature. Go down to bake animation and we want to make sure we uncheck all these. This is really important to make it all work. And I'm just going to name this custom path. Export as FBX. So once we have our custom path, it's as easy as uploading it right here on this button. We want to upload our FBX, upload, and immediately it will generate a realistic walk run animation for us using our custom path. It feels like magic, but um, yeah. And of course, to the right right here, we have a bunch of walking and running personality styles that we can use to customize it even further. What I found to be good for Spider-Man was to go to personalities and um, have a mix of thug in there as well. This way, the arms are a little bit more spread out. All right, let's say you're happy with the animation and you're ready to bring it into Blender. Well, we would just want to download the animation as the FBX right here. I'm going to call this AI generated path. All right, back in Blender, we can just turn off the Motorica armature and the mesh for now, and we'll import that export right now. And before we import, we need to change a few settings. First, we need to change the scale back to one so we don't make it tiny. And then we need to go down to armature and make sure that automatic bone orientation is checked. Now let's import that. And you can see that we have some sort of result. You can see that it's it's walking. But if you were to go to the side, the legs are all a bit messed up. It's like walking up a little bit. And to fix this, it's stated on the documentation, you just go to edit mode, expand the armature, expand this and expand root bone and you just want to select the root bone and hips. And first we are going to disconnect them. So we're going to press Alt P, disconnect bone, Alt P, clear parent. So now if we preview this, the armature will be correctly displayed. It's going to be important for retargeting. All right, so how do we apply this animation to our Spider-Man? Well, we need to use the animation retargeting add-on and it's called retargeting right here. And it's really straightforward. We're gonna name this animation the source rig because that's the source of the animation. Now we're selecting the spider rig. For the source, we will select that source rig. Next, we wanna create the bone mappings and now we want it to guess it automatically. So we'll just click guess and we'll click done. Now we need to set up the rest alignment. So we'll click on setup, target, should mimic the pose of the source as much as possible, right? I'm going to go to x-ray so we can do that with front view, go into local mode, and we'll just adjust these bones till they kind of match up with the source. And then the top view, now to need to rotate these arms a bit. So once everything's matched up and correct, we're going to hit apply. So you can see that this is working now. The Spider-Man rig is now copying the animation. And you can see that the feet stay where they should be. All right, so now we need to bake the animation. So I'm just heading to this big into action button and click it. All right, now that the animation is baked into the spider rig, we can finally start working with it and animate this rooftop jump off. First things first, we're going to use the Mixamo add-on developed for Blender. We're going to select the spider rig and we're just going to create a control rig. Here, um, I actually find it helpful to turn off the IK arms and IK legs. We can turn it back on later. I find it way easier to animate it this way. So now that we have that, uh, we want to be able to have a way of controlling Spider-Man independently. The best way to do that is to have an empty 
um, that Spider-Man is parented to. So I'm just going to add in an empty. Where do we position this empty? Well, uh, we should position it near Spider-Man's center of mass. So I'm going to go to pose mode. I'm going to select this hip bone. Press Shift S to bring cursor to select it. Go to object mode, select that empty selection to cursor. So now that empty straight in. Now let's rename this empty to Spider-Man control because this is the main empty that's going to be controlling the rotations and the movements of Spider-Man. Oh yeah, we have auto keyframing. So let's delete this little frame that we've made. To get it to move properly, all we have to do is go to the object constraints. Let's add a child of the target should be the source rig. And as you can see, the source rig has this one little root bone. So uh, we're just going to select root bone. And that's how you successfully retarget an animation to your rig. And the cool thing with having the object constraint is that like this isn't a permanent thing. We can uh, animate the influence and that's going to be important for the transition. So yeah, now we have Spider-Man running and we can start to build out a little scene. All right, so before we animate Spider-Man jumping off, we need to start blocking out the rooftop, block out a city and start to get a feel for how Spider-Man is going to fall and swing. So first, I'm going to create a cube that Spider-Man will be on. Once I've created my big building, I'm going to go to where Spider-Man is at the end of his run about to jump off. And I'm going to position the building accordingly. And I'm going to position this building until it lines up with Spider-Man's feet. And now let's actually start to block out more of the city. And we're going to be doing this really easily using the Blossom Open Street Map add-on. And before we do that, let's make sure that our view end is a bit higher at like 10,000 meters. This, that way we'll be able to see everything. Now let's head to the Blossom add-on. And from here, we want to click Select. Now it's going to bring up a page of the entire world. And we need to select a specific area where we want to import buildings. So I'm going to search New York. And there you go. There's Manhattan Island, New York. And I'm going to choose this central West Street part. Because this is where all the famous tall buildings are, Times Square and everything. Click Show Selection Rectangle. And then let's import like a kilometer square of New York. Once we're happy with the selection, we can just copy the string of coordinates head back into Blender and click paste. And before we actually import with this button, let's just disable some of the unnecessary objects. We just want to be left with the buildings and maybe roads and paths. All right, so let's hit import. All right, so once you've imported, it should look something like this. It's a gigantic scene. And all we really need are the buildings and main roads. So I'll just delete the rest. I'll combine all the roads into one. And now we're left with the buildings and roads, which is clean. So with those two selected, I'll start positioning my city to where our original scene is. Cool. So now that I've positioned my city, you can see that my main building fits really nicely along the other buildings. And now we can finally focus on animating everything, starting with the jump. All right. So to animate the jump, I'm going to go to the last frame where one of the feet touches the ground. And I'm going to auto keyframe the empty that's controlling Spider-Man. In the next few frames, I'll have him leap off up high into the air. And then following that, I'll have the empty fall down just a little bit. And I'm also going to make this final keyframe a vector. That way he's not slowing down. And what's important now is to tweak the keyframes and positioning until it starts to look natural like this. You can further make adjustments by bringing up the graph editor and adjusting the gradients of the curve to affect the smooth of each movement aspect. So now that that's looking pretty smooth, let's start rotating the empty itself to mimic the rotational energy of the jump. So I'm just going to rotate it to something like this. And when he falls, I'm going to completely flip him over. Once we're done with the general animation of the empty, we can finally start animating Spider-Man himself by going to pose mode. And once again, I'm going to the last frame where his feet is touching the ground, because after this, I want to animate him jumping off with force. So I'm going to press A to select everything, and I'm just going to delete the final two keyframes after this. And we're also going to make our animation job much easier by navigating to view, align view and view lock to active and, and i had the hip bone selected so if i preview this you'll be able to see that the camera follows the hip this is going to make it incredibly easy to animate spider-man jumping off smoothly so first i'm going to hide these distracting inverse kinematic bones now that that's cleaned up it's much easier to animate so let's head over to the frame where he's jumping off and i'm going to animate this foot pushing off the ground really hard then i'm going to have this right leg trail off a bit from that force I'm going to go forward and keep animating the leg until it looks right. And once he's in the air, I want the legs to kick back a little bit. And when he's falling, I'm just going to straighten those legs back. All right, so that's the right leg done. Let's move on with the left leg. I'm going to have this leg kind of kick the momentum forward. 
when he's just about to fall, I'm going to collect those legs in. And when he's falling, I'm going to unfold those legs. All right, so the legs are starting to look pretty good. Now let's work on the upper body and then arms. So I'm going to find the bone that tilts his entire upper body. And right before he jumps, and I'm just going to tilt this forward for now. And I'm also going to delete some of these keyframes before to, to give time for his body to rotate forward. And once he's jumped, I'm going to release that energy. Now upper body's looking good. Let's move on to the arms. To make it a good looking jump for the arms, we need to have them swing back. So right before he jumps, I'm going to move the arms around. And I'm also going to delete the keyframes before and after this to give time for the arms to transition. Great, so now it looks like he's storing up all that elastic energy. And now we need to redirect his momentum upward to justify his rotation, just like into the Spider-Verse. So when he's jumped off about this much, I want the arms to shoot fully upward. And to make animating two arms easier, you can also turn on symmetry right here. This way it will affect both arms, which is really handy. Cool, so now that Spider-Man throws his arms, in the next few frames, I want those arms to spread. And when he's falling, let's close in those arms a little bit. Now that that's looking good, let's finally animate the head. So when he's jumping, I, I want his neck to move back a little bit. As he's moving forward, I want him to maintain vision with the rooftop a bit before finally looking down to where he's falling. Cool, so now that we have him jumping off the rooftop, we can finally work on the actual Spider-Man dive and swing animation. And before we do anything, let's split our workspace into two sections. One that's focused on Spider-Man and the other that's stationary. This gives us two perspectives that kind of guide us in making the right choices for animation. So how do we animate him falling and swinging through the city? Well, I found that the best way to do this is to create a custom path through curves for him to follow. This path will define his entire trajectory from where he starts to where he ends up. So to make this path, I'm going to add a new Bezier curve. Right now it's in its default curvy shape, but through edit mode, we'll be able to adjust these curves, pressing E to extend and, and customizing an aerial path for Spider-Man to follow. First, I'm going to disable the city for now. That's going to be easier initially to set up the curve. So in edit mode, first, I'm going to straighten out this curve. I will rotate this to match Spider-Man's fall. And I'm actually going to position this starting point to where Spider-Man is at the end of his animation. So I'll just select cursor to this empty we've made and then bring the curve to the cursor. Cool, so now we can finally adjust this curve to fit Spider-Man's fall. And at the end of this animation, I'm imagining Spider-Man shoot out a web to the building that's next to him. So what that means for our movement is that he's going to basically swing like this, right? And once the momentum propels him upward, I can imagine that he'll slow down and start to fall again. So I'll create another kind of S-curve. So let's get Spider-Man to actually follow this path. And once we get past this step, the rest is going to be super easy. We'll call this curve Spider-Man path. So how do we transition from the run to the custom path? Well, you might remember that our empty has an object constraint that's still tied to that running root bone. And the idea is to add another object constraint that will allow him to follow the path while turning off the influence of the previous one. So to actually transition from the run to the custom path, we'll head over to the last frame where our Spider-Man empty is animated. Make sure the location on this frame is recorded. And here we'll head over to object constraint and add a follow path. Target of the path should be the Spider-Man path that we made for him. And on this last animation frame, I want the influence of the follow path to be zero for now. We'll head over one more frame and here's where we'll turn on the follow path to one. Now you'll see that the location has been offset and to easily fix this, make sure that your 3D cursor is on the starting point of the curve. You can easily do that by pressing selection to cursor in edit mode, press the empty and bring selection to cursor. Cool, so now it looks exactly the same, but now we have a follow path constraint which we can use to animate Spider-Man falling down. So one more thing, because Spider-Man has been moving this entire time, and when he transitions, he stays in the same place for two frames. So in order to counteract, on the frame where the follow path is on, I'm going to animate him going downwards just a little bit. Now let's move forward maybe 240 frames, and we'll just animate the offset of following this path all the way to the end. You'll notice that the transition is still a bit rough and there's like a slight pause where he's midair. And to fix that, we'll just go to graph editor and we'll just be making adjustments to the offset follow path by changing the gradient of the curves to be smoother. So I'll grab one of the points that's affecting this keyframe and I'll just maybe shorten it and see what that's doing. 
And this is where you want to experiment to get a good feel of gravity and make sure everything's kind of smooth and seamless. So I brought that point of the curve much closer, therefore the speed is consistent. I'll also make adjustments to the end curve to make sure he doesn't slow down too much. What I'll actually do is I'll bring back up the city. I'll select the building that he'll attach his webs to, and I'll just uh, duplicate this and separate this so that we have an easier point of reference. And with this building, we can even make more adjustments to the curve. I imagine when he's almost at the end of the curve, he's going to shoot out a web somewhere around here, and that will act like the center of the swinging point. Cool, so we can now finally start working up the layers of animation once again for the main swing scene. And we're just going to start with some basic rotation animations. So now that we have the curve animation, I'm going to extend this rotation keyframe to give him more time to rotate. And I might make him face the ground a little bit more. Alright, so I'm imagining that he's going to shoot out a web to my 3D cursor and swing onto that point. And when he does that, I want him to rotate a little bit forward to where he's going to shoot. Maybe, maybe something like that. Then I'll head to the point right before the curve where he will begin his swing and I'll set a keyframe for the X rotation here. And in the next few frames, I'm going to rotate him immediately really strong. And I think he's going to let go of the web somewhere here. So I'll fully maximize his rotation. Just a quick note, if you open up your graph editor, you might notice that we've been making these robotic transitions and we don't want that. So to fix that, we'll just press T and click Bezier and that will smoothen out the rotations. So once he lets go of his web, I want him to release all that pent up tension energy into a forward flip. So I'll fast forward to when he's at the peak of his point again, and I'll just rotate him fully one cycle. And the general rotation is starting to look pretty good. Now we can hit the pose mode and finally start animating this to look really good. So let's start with his upper body rotation. So as he's falling, we're going to gradually refine his upper body rotation to match our scene. And right before he pulls the web, I'm going to set a keyframe. And as he's rotating, I'm immediately going to swing this upper body forward. All right, so I've made some adjustments and you'll see that he bends his upper body forward a little bit. And as he's reaching the point of letting go his web, I'm going to arch his back backwards. When he's going forward into a front flip, I'm going to have him arch forward again. All right, so I've made some adjustments and keyframes to the entire upper body bones. And you'll see that as he's falling, it's starting to look pretty smooth. Now let's move on to the neck and head to complete our upper body. So somewhere along this curve, I want him to start looking to where he's going to shoot the webs. So right here, I'll record his neck and head keyframes. And now that he's actually swinging, wreck that neck to look forward on the city. All right, the neck's starting to look pretty good. As he's about to let go of the web, I'm going to extend that neck even further. And again, we'll just select all keyframes and turn them into Bezier curves to smoothen out the animation. All right, that's the neck done, and you'll see the upper body looks even smoother. Now let's move on to the lower hips that can be controlled with this bone right here. And again, we'll just make adjustments along the swing that fit Spider-Man's natural movements. I'm going to flex his hips forward a little bit. Now this is the key strike pose of the swings. We'll fold his hips forward a bit. And as he's doing a front flip, I'm going to fold those hips even more. Yeah, the hips are starting to look pretty good. Now let's move on to the main legs, and this is really what's going to sell it. I'll change the view to lock to his leg bone. As he's swinging, I want his legs to shoot forward into a strike pose. Then as he's letting go of the web, I'm going to fold that leg back in. With his left leg, I'm also going to strike this into a pose. I'm going to extend this one outward, and I'm going to bend this back inwards. And as he's about to let go, let's extend this leg back out. And let's actually have the legs trail back a bit. And once we're done, you'll see we'll have this really cool striking pose effect when he's pulling on the web. And when he's coming out of the front flip, let's have his legs kick in into a classic Spidey pose. All right, let's finally animate Spider-Man's right arm, which he will be using to shoot out the web and actually pull on the web. So first, as he's falling, let's keep adjusting the arm animations to look a bit more natural. Cool, so I'm going to go to the part where Spider-Man starts to look at where he's going to swing, and I'll have his arm kind of move forward. And then, like we said, let's just make this swing outwards. 
I'm going to have his arm do a little bit of a flick to emphasize the web shooting. So I'll fold his arm inwards first, and then I'll quickly shoot it outwards. Now let's focus back on the upper arm. Now as he's rotating, I'm going to immediately pull back on this arm. I'm going to set another keyframe around here. And when he's finally about to let go, I'll have his arm stretch out backwards. So yeah, we're just continuing to work on the upper arm until it starts to look pretty smooth. And when he's swinging forward, I'm going to have him kind of fold his arms inward a little bit. Now let's quickly animate the left arm. All right, once we're done with the two arms, let's see what we have. Now let's go back and animate the wrists because that's going to add a lot of detail. Let's lock to that active wrist to make it easier to animate. Right, again, we'll just emphasize this little flick that he does. And as he's shooting, let's extend this fully. Animate the left wrist as well. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. Yeah, that's looking good. And finally, let's animate the finger movements a little bit. So as he's about to shoot out his web, let's uh let's select all these bones. I'm going to right before he shoots out the web, and I'm going to set a keyframe. And as he's flicking his wrist. Let's make it into that classic web shooter pose. Let's keyframe everything right before he pulls. And when he pulls, let's curl up our hand into a ball. Cool. So he's web shooting and then pulling it into a fist, which looks really good. Now let's animate him letting go of his web. We can see that he lets go properly now. Maybe let's curl up those fingers again when he's posing. Cool, so after animating every body part, you'll see that animation is actually coming together really nicely. The final thing we're going to do to this animation to make it even more realistic is to add some flapping air resistance animations to the limbs. So to do this, we'll use the graph editor again. And let's start with the leg. And we're going to be focusing on the upper legs. So right when he's falling, I want the randomization to begin. We're going to be choosing the axes we want to randomize this. So I, would, I definitely want to rotate it this way, which is the X rotation, and then also the Z rotation. You can uh, see the color of the rotation uh, on here, where it's kind of red and blue. So uh, with the rotation you want to randomize, you want to select that in the graph editor, head over to modifiers, and let's add a noise modifier on that. So I'm going to change the blend type to maybe subtract to have it rotate forwards. Let's uh, increase the scale a little bit, to something like 20, maybe less. And let's reduce the scale to like 0.3. Let's also head down and restrict the frame range to where we want it to affect the animation. So I'm going to make it start affecting when he's in free fall. Uh, so let's just put 115 for me. And let's also make it end right when he's rotating. So like 175. Let's increase these blend in and out factors to smoothen the transitions. Once you've done some tweaking to the settings and you like it, we're going to be copying this noise modifier to the other tab. You can click this little button to copy the F modifier. Let's go to the Z rotation of the leg, right? And then let's paste it. It's going to be exactly the same. So we're just going to offset it, maybe change a bit of the scale and the strength. Cool. So now we're getting a bit of that random free fall movement. Let's copy this to the other leg. So I'll select the X rotation, copy, go to the X rotation of this one, and then just paste it. And I'll just change the offset. I'll take the Z rotation of this one, copy, go to the other leg, Z rotation, paste. And I'm just going to change the offset by like 10 frames. And what's cool about the offset is if you change the offset just slightly between legs, it's going to feel like they're trailing behind each other and it's going to feel really realistic. And now we're getting this cool trailing behind effect. Now let's move on to the arms. Let's copy this modifier and paste it on the Z rotation. And we'll change up the scale a little bit, maybe the strength, maybe change the blend type to like replace. Yeah, that's looking really natural. Now let's copy this to the other arm. And you know, you could take this one step further and apply a similar effect to the entire body where applicable. Like for example, we could have this kind of trailing around. Let's also maybe do the same thing to this control hip bone that's controlling everything. 
And just look how clean this entire thing looks. Now we have him falling realistic and we have him swinging and we're finally ready to animate the web. To create the webs, I'm going to base off a technique and workflow developed by Peter France for his Spider-Man video. And I'd highly recommend you check out his video if you want more information on his webs and general Spider-Man stuff. All right, so first I'm going to navigate to where I want him to shoot the webs. And I'm just going to position my 3D cursor right at the web shooters. And for the webs, we're going to be creating a plane. And let's just quickly call this plane web. And in edit mode, we're, I'm just going to be deleting two vertices. So we're left with a line. And this line essentially represents our web. The starting point of the web is going to be attached to the wrist, obviously. So selecting the cursor. And the other end of the web is going to be attached to the building that he's going to swing from. So I'll position my 3D cursor to where I think he'll be swinging from. And I'll bring selection to cursor. And now we have a primitive idea of what the webs are going to be. Now let's select both vertices and subdivide the edge a few times something like and with each end of the web we're going to press ctrl h to hook this part to a new object let's do the same for the end of the web and essentially these empties act as our hooks that can control our starting and ending points let's call it the one at the risk web start and let's call the one at the building web end cool now you notice that as we move along the frames the webs the web stays in place and to get it to attach, we need to parent it to the wrist bone that we have right here. And a better way to do this is by adding an object constraint. So let's add a child of. The target should be the spider rig. The bone in this case is the hand FK right. Um, and let's set inverse to reset the position. Cool, so now the starting web is attached to his wrist. And to animate this web, we're essentially going to be using a cloth operation to handle all the physics. So let's head over to physics and add a cloth operation. Let's head down to cash and let's start the simulation where he starts shooting out of his wrists. And you'll see that the cloth operation has just made this line fall. And to fix that, we need to create intrinsic pin groups for the cloth operation to know. So we'll do that by going to object data properties. Let's add a new vertex group. And in this vertex group, let's select the start and end and assign. And let's call this vertex group pin. Now going back to the cloth tab, let's, uh, let's open up shape and select that pin group that we have. Cool, so that looks way better. Right now the web's a bit loose, so let's turn up the shrinking factor to like 0.7. And now let's animate Spider-Man letting go of his side of the web. And we'll do that by controlling the influence that's connecting it to the wrist. I'm going to lock the view to the active wrist bone right here so I have a better perspective. And right before he lets go, I'm going to select the web start and set a keyframe for the influence. Then the next frame, I'm going to set the influence to zero. And you'll see that because the influence is now zero, the position has been reset to where it originally was when we shot the web. We need to fix this by, we can just fix this by animating location as well. And go to the part where the influence is still one um, and let's uh, keyframe the location. Let's also bring cursor to selected. Um, go to the next frame and let's bring selection to the cursor. Maybe make it go down just a little bit and uh, let's uh, make sure we apply that keyframe. That looks good, but right now the web is too tight when he lets go. So let's select the web. And so I'll set a keyframe for the shrinking factor, head over to the next frame and I will just turn this down to, and I'll turn this down to zero. And that results in a very loose web when he lets go. Let's also animate this hook to like slowly fall down. To get the simulation to update, we need to change some of the, we need to constantly tweak some settings for it to kind of catch on that it needs to update. Cool, and now the only thing left to do is to animate the web shooting out, because right now it's existing before that point. So I'll head over to the frame where he's shooting it. I'm just going to animate the render visibility of the web. So I'll just press I on the monitor and the camera. I'll head over to the previous frame and I'll just turn that off. So now it only appears when he's swinging. We can also animate the web end to kind of simulate him. It's shooting out. So let's say it takes four frames to reach the building. So I'll just uh, set, a, set a keyframe for the location. I'll go back to where he's sh shooting it. Um, and let's position it somewhere ne near the start. Visible object. And to make this an actual visible object, let's go to modifiers and let's add a screw modifier. Um, and change the angle to like 0 0.02. Cool. Um, let's also add a solidify modifier. Yeah, that's that. And yeah, that's looking like a web. And finally, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And that's going to smoothen out the animation even more. The web might still clip through and you'll have to experiment with the web start and end position. So now that we have a web animation ready to go, it's time to set everything in stone and bake the animation. It's time to finalize everything and set everything in stone. 
and this includes baking the actual cloth simulation of the web. But before you do that, make sure you select the actual path of Spider-Man. And in edit mode, we want to subdivide this a lot of time. You'll see I've already done this. And this will essentially smoothen out his movement points so you can't see him jittering through the air when we add a camera. Now that his movements is way smoother, we can finally bake the web animation itself. And after that, we're finally done with all the main Spider-Man animations, the web animations, and we can finally focus on building out a city, adding rooftop details, street details, and wrapping this up into a cinematic shot. And let's get started with texturing the block out. So before we do anything, an important step is to head over to data properties, UV maps, and we want to make sure we switch to the second UV map. And this is going to make sure that all the textures look how they're supposed to. All right, so to have our city look like an actual city, Let's select all and separate the building by loose parts. And you know, we could just kind of texture every single little loose object, but since there are literally thousands of pieces, let's have it easier by having a small selection of these cube buildings that kind of represents the city realistically. So I'll just go ahead and choose some main building blocks. And you know, we don't necessarily have to block out the entire city as long as, because our animation is just focused on this little intersection. So all these other buildings are not gonna be relevant for the scene. So once I have the blocked out building cubes that I wanna keep, I'm just gonna move them to a new collection. Let's call these scene buildings. And we can basically disable or even delete the old collection that had all the other building blocks. Cool. And you can probably tell that it is way easier to work with. So to texture our buildings, we're going to be using some building textures that I've generated on mid journey. And you can see me experimenting with a lot of prompts in order to get some really interesting building texture results. If you have mid journey, I'll actually share these prompts on Google docs. And that's probably, that's probably linked somewhere below. So I also share these specific textures that I'll be using with you guys for free. And now I'll actually show you how to use those custom building textures and add some and model some really simple geometry to make our buildings look way more intricate than just a bunch of blocks. So let's just start with this building right here that's close to Spider-Man. I'll add a new material. Let's call this building one. I'll navigate to my textures and I'll just select one of these. We might need to press U and Q project. Let's pull up, let's also pull up the UV. Let's also pull up the UV editor so we can easily make adjustments and maybe scale everything up. You'll see the texture starts to repeat on itself and that can kind of break it sometimes, but you can do a lot of modeling to hide those seams or you can even just keep the stretching like this, but you can kind of squeeze in a lot horizontally. And we can even add more geometry by, let's say, adding a lot of subdivisions, beveling this one time, beveling those edges by one segment, maybe extrude the faces along normals and just start adjusting and experimenting with the textures. And you can see that for a fast moving animation, this building probably looks pretty good. This building probably looks pretty good. As for the rooftop, well, we could just go to edit mode, select this face. Let's make a new material and assign this. And that's essentially it. We could, and you know, we could add like a sort of rooftop texture. So I have this concrete image texture that I'll just connect. Maybe add an RGB curves and really darken that. You could also add like custom roughness maps to add more detail to the surface. Maybe even add a bump map. Maybe inset this rooftop, extrude it down. Might need to reproject some of the stretch geometry. And you can see that this is a really fast and easy way to create good looking buildings. So just repeat the same process with different textures for the other buildings and yeah. And after some time and effort, I'm left with a bunch of decent looking building models, perfectly suitable for our short little Spider-Man cinematic. The next step is obviously to add a proper ground, and this includes building up the intersection and sidewalks before scattering them with more detailed assets. And for the main intersection and roads, I'm going to be using this image texture, which started off as just a free image I found online, but then I customized and modified it using AI generation to extend parts of the road, modify to how I wanted, and I even upscaled the whole thing to like 4K. I'm just going to adjust the image material to make it look way more realistic. So now that I've adjusted the materials, I can even just duplicate this road texture to create more detail along the roads. And again, we're only making something that looks good from Spider-Man's kind of point of view. All right, now we just need to scatter the city with as many assets as possible. I'm, talk I'm talking about cars, trees, traffic intersections, rooftop objects, structures, towers. Everything I just mentioned can be found online for free because there are so many free resources out here that are definitely usable for our Spider-Man scene. And I've just been gathering all the free assets I can find online. Things like water tanks, stairs, towers, cars, buses. And I'm just going to go ahead and scatter them in my scene. Because at this point, it's just a matter of creative choice and just littering your scene with natural chaos and order. Alright, as you can see, I've started to scatter some rooftop elements, like these air cons right here, and they're all over the building rooftops. And yeah, they just add a little bit of detail, and um, I'm just going to keep adding more stuff until it looks good. 
I just got like these heap of pebbles and rocks and like what I can do is I can just position them right under the surface. Basically just adding imperfections to make it gr more grounded and realistic. Alright, so now I've added even more to the rooftop. I'm just gonna add some pedestrians, cars, trees, and um, yeah, I think we can move on from there. So, alright, so I've added a ton of stuff. I've added crowds, trees, cars, buses, traffic lights. I even parented some of the cars to empties and have them move sections of traffic. Let's say we're satisfied with this intersection and we're ready to animate some cinematic camera shots. First, I'll just turn off all these clutter assets that I've scattered. So if you remember, we had this empty, right? And we basically locked the view to that active empty. And we're basically going to be doing a similar thing with the camera. Because if you think about it, this viewport is already kind of acting as our camera. And it would be perfect to animate like this. First, let's start by adding a camera. Let's put it in a new collection called Camera. Gonna make this a cinematic aspect ratio. So if you remember, this empty kind of controls our Spider-Man, and this would be a perfect subject for the camera to focus on. And it already has all our movement data in there. So what I'll actually do is with the empty selected, I'll duplicate it, move it to the camera collection. So in order to have this location of the empty usable for our camera, we have to bake all the animations. And we're going to be doing that with something called visual keyframing. So if we head over to object, bake action, you'll see that we have a lot of options over here. So what we want to do is to apply visual keying and then clear constraints. Let's press OK. Well, cool. now we have an entirely separate empty. It has movement that is fully baked in and we can finally use this to guide the camera. So with the camera selected, I'll just head over to the Constraints tab. Once again, let's add a child of constraint. We'll set the target to be the camera control. So yeah, as you can see, it's following Spider-Man just fine. But you'll notice that it's kind of doing all the flips with him. And you know, you could be creative with camera shots and find a way to get a really cool first-person perspective of Spider-Man rotating through the city. But for a cinematic shot, let's just keep it subtle. Uh, let's not have it rotate too much. All we want to do is just select the camera control, head down to the timeline, and let's just delete all the rotation keyframes. So now the camera is just fully locked on. And the cool thing is we can still kind of reposition our camera and animate it independently wherever we want. So um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right, so I've added some basic animations. As you can see, it just kind of follows Spider-Man. I move around the camera a bit. And, I'm, and here I added another camera from the other shot. This camera is going to continue when he swings. And um, yeah, let me just let me quickly show you how to switch between cameras. With my first camera select, I'll just set marker. Bind cameras to marker, so that's camera one. And then um, I'll go to the frame where I wanted to switch. So let, let's say I wanted to switch there, so I'll just add another marker, select the second camera, and then marker, bind camera to marker. And the final thing, the final thing that's going to sell this is to add some camera shake. And um, I'm going to be using Ian Huber's free camera shake if I add on. Um, if you don't have this, get it, it's free. The camera will suddenly have automated camera shakes. With a click of a button, the camera will now have automated camera shakes and you can select from a variety of camera shakes and, and it breathes so much life to the animation. It really feels like you're there as Spidey falling down through the city. Let's maybe turn on depth of field, uh, focus on Spidey, uh, change ratio to two for anamorphic, turn down f-stop to like two. You should be ending up with a pretty decent cinematic of Spider-Man swinging through the city. And you know, if you put 150% of effort into it, you can get it to look really, really good. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you end up making your own Spider-Man scene, let me know. I want to see it. I know some of you guys definitely have questions for me. So just leave a comment below and I'll get to you. So I really hope you consider checking out my Patreon. If not, maybe leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe to see more.